moving. Yeah, where I'm visiting, let's keep one thing clear. The bait's over there, the brew's right here. I like cool beverage, yeah. I like cool beverage, yeah. I like cool beverage, yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody, Bobby, I'm back for another installment of the Brew Water series of videos, and this is the third installment. And uh, if you haven't seen the first two, please go back and watch those in order, or at least the first one before you come back here. Um, so that you know where I'm at. Uh, this uh, video is going to focus on how I would modify my water to brew a darker beer, uh, which is a little bit more challenging, but uh, not too bad. And um, the recipe example I'm going to use is for a smoked porter. So the important uh, feature here is the the color target, which is 30 SRM. All right, so I'm going to go back to my easy water adjustment spreadsheet. And again, the uh, the numbers from my water tests are already populated in the fields here from before and I saved the spreadsheet so that saves some time. I also noted the mash water and sparge water volumes for that smoke porter recipe uh, that I just showed you. Alright so now that that's entered we can kind of analyze um, what where we stand. Um, I'm going to select or I've already selected the London profile because that's pretty appropriate for a porter and uh, just like um, before I have, you know, a big deficiency in my calcium and sulfate, just like in for any style. Let's compare it to London. Okay, I'm low. I'm low in um, calcium. Uh, I have about a third of the appropriate amount of magnesium. My sodium is very low. My chlorate's a little bit high, but my sulfate is about half of what it should be. The important thing here that I want to note is that the chloride to sulfate ratio for London is about 1 to 1. Now rather than um, try to match my sulfate to the 32 and leave my chloride high, I would rather bring the sulfate up to make a, a 1 to 1 relationship uh, at about 50. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much all I have to do. Um, now the the slight nuance with uh, doing a darker beer is the residual alkalinity for the mash pH and since we're looking at a 30 SRM beer you can see that our residual alkalinity is is way too low so as we start adding our salts to get the calcium up and all the other um, ions up into the uh, London range we also have to make sure that we try to get our um, residual alkalinity up as well so Let's take a look at the different salts I can add again. Um, notice that chalk raises residual alkalinity, lowers, 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 so I can't do that. Raises, that's baking soda. Okay, so I'm going to try to focus on uh, the salts that raise residual alkalinity uh, so that I can get that to say something like 25 to 28 or, you know, 30. All right, so since I know I need to bring my sulfate up and my calcium, um, you know, you might go to gypsum right away because th that seems to be convenient. However, it lowers residual alkalinity. So I'm going to try to figure out a different way of getting that. Now, first thing is, is I can use chalk because that, that's really ra raising my uh, residual alkalinity and just adding the calcium that I need. So I'm going to try adding a gram of that. And that gets me closer, and it does bring the RA up a little bit. The other thing that brings it up is baking soda. So I'm going to try maybe three grams of that. I'm getting closer. Um, my magnesium and sulfate is low, so I can go in with some Epsom salt. I'll try one gram there, uh, maybe two. All right, that's getting me uh, closer, definitely. Um, but I can probably go to three. Okay, uh, sulfate went a little bit too high. I'm going to go back to 2.5. And you can see I have about a 1 to 1 ratio, chloride to sulfate. So that pretty much matches. It's a, you know, a little bit higher in, in overall amount, but the ratio is what's important. Um, and my calcium is still a little bit low, so I can change this to 1.5. Okay, so now my calcium is in the 50s, and that's close enough for me. Now let's look at the residual alkalinity. It's still too low. So I don't need any more calcium, so I can't use more chalk. So I'm going to go back to baking soda and try maybe 5 grams. Okay, and my sodium is a little bit high, but that's okay. And 
my residual alkalinity is close enough to show me that I'm not going to um, go too acidic on my mash. Okay, so it's close enough. I'm not going to go, um, I'd rather err on the side of a slightly acidic mash than, than too basic. So let's call that done. Now, in this particular case, I got lucky because all of the salts that I added to the mash tun uh, also has a an addition to the boil kettle in the whatever proportion the mash to sparge water ratio was. So you can see that um, it, it wants me to add 5 grams to the mash tun and then 2.8 grams to the boil kettle. The only thing is is that I don't really like adding baking soda uh, after the mash is over because really all you're bringing with it is the sodium. So let's just say that the target wasn't 82. Let's say that it was about 60. I'm just going to overwrite that temporary just to show you. Now in order to get my residual alkalinity up I had to use uh, enough baking soda to do that but now if I add that to the boil kettle I'm adding even more salt and frankly there's no reason to in after the mash is over because the pH concerns are, are done at that point so this utility also allows exclusion in the in the uh, boil kettle so if you just click that checkbox or uncheck it you'll see that the boil kettle addition goes to zero now the important thing here is that my residual alkalinity stayed the same up high where I need it but now my sodium see this is the mesh uh, profile this is the overall water profile so you can see that when the whole batch is done it more closely matches that target um, so that's one way of doing that another way uh, is uh, with chalk uh, let's say that I used say three grams of chalk to get my uh, residual alkalinity up and uh, but my calcium is now going over by 31 ppm now I can uncheck that so I don't add chalk to the boil kettle and you can see that um, you know 60 64 versus 52 that's kind of acceptable it's not you know it's only 12 ppm all right so uh, that's that's a nice feature of this utility that it lets you exclude salts from the uh, boil kettle on a you know individual basis. Alright so I'm going to stop there.